This is a data set of flower measurements. There are three different varietals of flowers, and these are measurements of the flower size. If we plot this, we can see there's some spread of the flower size. It's difficult to tell, though, um, looking at this, what this means since it's all blue. So let's change the colors. In order to do that in Excel, we have to do a little bit of Excel Jiu-Jitsu. So, so just writing the names of the different bridles. Right, now I'm going to make a new column. This is going to be if the varietal equals the label, then this value else in a. All right, now I'm just going to lock these in place. I want to make sure I'm always getting that um, column and that row. And say anything here, I want that column. Okay, so this first one is a Stosa, and so it's here. It is not these things, so this should be an A. Right, so now I've created this thing where it's in A if that condition is not true, and it has the value if it is. Now I can take the width and these columns, and do a scatter plot. This is the same thing we saw, but now it's colored by the type of bridle. What we see is that they clump together. So if you look at these blue ones, they're all Satosa, and they're all friends together. And the orange ones all kind of clump together, and the gray ones clump together. Um, there's a little bit of uh, mixing here, so we could try a different one. So looking at the petal length. And we'll see if this produces any. Oh, yeah, great. So now we see that Satosa is very different than the others. Um, so let's just do one last one. Great. So in each one of these charts, we're looking at the same um, flowers, just plotting different things, and they're color coded by their bridal type. Perfect. Um, so the basic idea of K nearest neighbors is that given any point, the label for that point should be the average of who's nearby. Um, so if we take this point, we would say who are its neighbors? They're all blue, so this one's blue. This point, its neighbors are mainly orange. Um, a little gray, but overall orange, so it should be orange. Um, and that's how, how this works. Um, so let's just do a little test. I'm going to create a new column for random number equals rand. That produces a random number between 0 and 1. Rank rank um, between this and I-151. So we'll just one last thing we'll do um, uh, train. We'll say this is equal if this is greater than 
point eight, then train else test. What this is going to do is give me a random selection of these values that are um, going to be used for testing or training. Now, every time I touch this, it gives a new number. So I'm going to freeze it in place by copying it and pasting the values. All right. Now I'm just going to sort. Um, Guys, do I have? I need some more. I need 45 because yeah, that's the way I wrote the other code. So I'm just gonna switch those. Okay. And practice, not the best way to do it, but I've already written this code, and when you see the code, you'll understand. Why I don't want to change it. Um, I've also got this backwards, so these are actually going to be my test set, and these values here are my train set. They're the values I'm going to use as my starters. Insert copied sets. Okay, so I've got 45 of these, um, and I've got, this would be like 106 or 105 of these. Yeah, 105 actually. Great. Now I'm going to find the mathematical distance between them. Um, so this is a very complex formula. Uh, from Excel. Pretty wild way of doing it, but it works. Go out here to 105. All right. I need to format this as a table. So format as table. And I want to name this. Um, just making sure I do it the same. Test ID. Go ahead and copy that value. By doing this first time, um, and keeping it the same, it just means that I know the code worked well. I know the code works. That's didn't copy the right thing. There we go. Okay. So this code is really wild. What we're going to do is measure the mathematical distance between all of the different flowers. So we have this table, it's the mathematical distance between each of the flowers. Fun. Uh, this should 
should it be called? It is. Uh, it pulled the wrong values across. Um, because Excel is kooky. Back over here. Since we did a random number, the number should be different for each person. Keeps wanting to go to the different spreadsheet. Um, so what I'm copy this whole thing. I'm going to go to text editor. Paste, you copy. The problem is Excel is trying to be smarter um, than we want it to be. I just want it to take the values. Fix to the table. Okay. So I forgot to name this. Distance. Now, let's see if it works. Good gracious. All right, well, we'll switch over. Um, this is the one I did before. I'm just going to show you how I did it step by step, but it's, it's nuts. Um, so then I went through and I said, these are my tests, and here are the six ones that are closest to it. Um, so mathematically, here's the ones that are close. Um, and this is the actual value for one. And so we can see one, its six closest friends are all Satosa, and it's actually Satosa. This one, its six closest friends are um, Versicolor, and it's actually Versicolor. This one, no, let's see if we find one that's on the edge. This one. Um, it has one friend that's a verse color. It's very close. It's the closest neighbor, actually. Um, but its other five friends are Virginica. And so overall, it is Virginica. Okay, and that is the way that we use the nearest neighbors mathematically or um, by distance to uh, classify these different things. And we did that using Excel. And this. Um, wild formula and that wild formula.